Great. Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out this morning uh, to hear our latest updates. We were uh, at South by last year for the first time, and we talked through our 2022-2021 edition of Entertainment Trends, and we're back this year to talk about 2022. It's an updated, in-depth look at the industry, and uh, we hope you're going to enjoy what we're going to go through over the next uh, 45 minutes or so. As a reminder, Illuminate is a business. We operate at the intersection of growth and disruption in the music and entertainment economy, and the last 12 months have provided an abundance of both for us to look at, so I think we're going to find a lot to get through today. Last year, for those who were here in a much smaller room, we talked about lots of different things. We talked about music consumption trends, globalization, window wars, the return to movie theaters, streaming subscriptions, NFTs, and so much more. And unsurprisingly, we've actually seen pretty strong resilience in some of these trends over the last 12 months, intensification of some as well, um, and of course, some of them fading away, and we're going to get into all of that over the next 45 minutes. The last 12 months was really interesting as well. It was a year, and we saw incredible change. We saw things like the return of Bob Iger to Disney. We saw Warner Brothers and MGM, uh, sorry, the Warner Brothers Discovery and the MGM Amazon mergers completing. We saw shows like House of Dragons, Lord of the Rings going head to head for ratings. We saw Top Gun Maverick bringing audiences back to the theater. We saw a change in leadership at, uh, at Warner Music and so much more happening. And um, we're going to look at some of the underlying data behind what's been happening and try and uncover a little bit about what's going on. So let's start on our first trend by looking at the continued growth and change in both music and entertainment streaming, which is a really big topic for us to look at. So US music streaming hit a major milestone in 2022 reaching one trillion on-demand audio streams for the first time ever. This is also the first time that US on-demand audio growth actually accelerated since 2018. And we actually saw close to 120 billion net gain in streams, or an increase in 12% in 2022, which is really phenomenal growth considering how large the streaming industry and streaming consumption is in the US market today. Leading this growth was actually Harry Styles' hit as it was, which was 2022's top on-demand audio streaming song, both in the US, where it achieved some over 600 million streams, and globally, where it reached over 2.3 billion. The US is an incredibly large number, but it wasn't just a US story, though, in 2022. Global on-demand audio streams accelerated as well, adding over 600 billion new streams across the course of the year. While streaming remains the dominant form of consumption, we do see very, very different fan groups and different genres of fans consuming music in very, very different ways. For example, Latin fans, and we'll talk more about Latin music a little bit later on, are 30% more likely to watch short-form video music clips on social sites. And of course, short-form video is a way which discovery is happening for many fans and fan genres right now. And then if we look at hip-hop, hip-hop fans are 23% more likely to stream audio songs online. So again, the headline number around streaming consumption, when we dig a little deeper, we see some interesting trends which are driving adoption in different categories. If we look into other genres, country fans actually, interestingly, are 12% more likely to listen to AM, FM radio. And if we look at rock fans, they're 8% more likely to listen to vinyl records and LPs. <laughs> and we'll talk a little bit more about vinyl a bit later on as well. And then lastly, pop fans look more like the average US consumer, which we saw very much when we look at Taylor Swift's very even sales distribution across digital and physical products in 2022. When we tie some of these trends together, what we see, we can look at massive albums like the releases from Bad Bunny, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, which all drew massive headlines in 2022 and actually topped the Billboard Top 200 the week of the release, but in very, very different ways. The Bad Bunny release had a 100% digital offering, 96% of fan consumption coming through streaming. But by comparison, Beyonce's release saw only 43% coming from streaming, and the CD is actually the next highest category at around 38%. And Taylor Swift broke a record with over 500,000 vinyl units sold in the first week. But overall, a much more even distribution with 36% across vinyl, 28% across streaming, and 25% coming from CDs. So while streaming remained dominant in 2022, digging into the detail by fan, genre, and even individual album paints a very different picture of how music is being consumed and enjoyed today. So we look at the second trend, we look a bit around formats and fandom. And uh, fandom's a really important topic and something we're spending more and more time on. Fandom and superfans specifically is very interesting to us right now. 
So what makes a super fan? Super fans are really qualified as music listeners who spend above average time and money on music. They're actively discovering new music, they're participating in music-related activities on social media, and plan on attending live music in the next 12 months, so basically this audience right now. Uh, and these characteristics often, often manifest as increased social signaling, so very present on social media, expressing identity through the artists they support, and participating in communities that are created around fans and the fandom for a specific artist. So how do these superfans show up in our data? If we look at the Gen Z category specifically, Gen Z is very interesting because Gen Z is very, um, really wants to have more merchandise. In fact, 31% of Gen Z wish artists provided much more merchandise options to their fans so they can show their support. Superfans, unsurprisingly, are three times more likely to have purchased vinyl in the last year. And at the same time, and we've talked about this before, what's very interesting to us is 50% of these vinyl buyers don't actually own a record player. <laughs> these superfans are looking for very, very different ways to express their support for the artists they love, so true superfans. And as we'll see a little bit later on, superfans are critical to a music industry with more and more music being produced and the need for artists to find multiple channels to create revenue from their music and content. The third trend we'll take a look at is short form video. Um, and it's outsized importance to music discovery. In fact, we calculate it in some fan categories, nearly 30% of listeners discover music via short form video clips, which is enormous. We talked about this trend in 2021, and 2022 as well, we saw this intensifying increase and actually become more complex as things like sync placements on TV shows and streaming platforms really amplified the impact of short form video and how it's used to discover and consume music. Nothing captured this better than the inclusion of Kate, Book's, Kate Bush's track, Running Up That Hill, in the hit Netflix TV show, Stranger Things. As you can hopefully see on the slides, the impact started in May 2022 when the show was released, unsurprisingly, through song placement and sync. What we actually saw is we saw streaming consumption of that particular track increase by an incredible 21,000% in the three weeks following the premiere. And the end result is that the track Running Up That Hill ended up as the 19th most streamed song in the US in 2022, with over 300 million plays in roughly seven months. When we zoom out from Stranger Things and look at this trend as a whole, what our data shows is that two out of three Gen Z TikTok users specifically discover new music via short form video clips, making it the number one source of music discovery for this group overall. And when you link this back to Stranger Things, and specifically on that particular project, the engagement and discovery amplified on TikTok, resulting in over 2.3 million fan creations using the official sound by the end of June 2022, which is only eight weeks after the song was featured. What does short form discovery mean for more traditional music streaming services though? Well, our research shows Spotify and Apple Music continue to gain users who discover music on short form video platforms due to overlaps in audience. So fans who discover music through short form video are 43% more likely to use Apple Music and 35% more likely to use Spotify. A fourth trend is a really big one and one we get asked about a lot from our customers and partners in the industry overall, and that's the continued rise of catalog versus current music consumption, and we talked about this one last year as well. What you're seeing in this chart is really interesting. It's the percentage of com consumption of current or frontline music over the last five years, with the headline being that the share of US current streaming in 2022 is nearly 11% lower than it was in 2019. And as a reminder, current music is defined as music released in the last 18 months. Over the last five years, we've seen the biggest decline, specifically in 2021, where the share of current streaming dropped from 35% in 2020 to 30% in 2021, or a 5% drop overall. Even more significantly, we see more than 30% of all streaming in both the US and globally last year coming from music released between 2017 to 2020, so a six-year period and more than 77% in the US and 80% globally coming from 2010 to current day, so a 12-year period. So what continues to drive this is we'll see later on the amount of new music being created 
continues to grow at an astonishing rate, creating its own challenges. But discovery of established artists and their deeper pack catalogs through other media is also a major factor. Let's take a look at Elton John and his live stream event on Disney Plus in November last year, which was an incredible event. First of all, our research shows that rock is the most popular genre for Disney Plus users, and it's either the number one or number two genre for all generations. So when you combine the Disney Plus experience and Elton John for a once in a lifetime event, you have an incredible partnership and really interesting potential for disruption. The Elton John Live Farewell from Dodger Stadium event on Disney Plus drove total on-demand streaming gains of his current album, Diamonds, by just over four million streams week on week. And the entire Elton John catalog by just under three million streams week on week. And hopefully you can see the spike towards the right-hand side of the chart up on screen. What's really interesting is you can see the live event actually drove more catalog interest than Elton's earlier in the year collaboration, Hold Me Closer track released with Britney Spears, which while that spiked demand for the Diamonds release, had a much less significant impact on his catalog overall. Events like this, therefore, are really one very interesting and contributing factor to the continued rise of catalog consumption, and this is a trend we absolutely see continuing in 2023 and expect to be talking about that more here this time next year. Hand in hand with catalog consumption is the continued focus on music as an asset class and catalog acquisitions. Rising interest rates in late 2022 started to cool what we saw as over five billion investment in the 2021 period, but there were still really massive and notable transactions in the last 12 months, such as David Bowie, Neil Diamond, Sting, Justin Timberlake, Phil Collins, Whitney Houston, and many, many more. So this begs the question, why is music such an attractive asset, and why is there so much focus on this right now? So looking at this more closely, what we've seen is two very clear trends. Number one, music generates value for the new rights holder from day one. With access to an artist's music, ubiquitous on streaming platforms, a predictable revenue stream is available for any buyer from literally the day they take ownership of that particular catalog. The second thing, of course, and things like Elton John, example we just gave, show that there's massive opportunity for leverage from further investment. There are multiple opportunities for additional direct and indirect revenue from things like sync, live, live stream events, and much, much more for elite level talent. And then lastly, emerging markets, and we'll talk about globalization in a moment, emerging markets offer new opportunities. This continued growth of streaming services around the world, and what this means is that we can now use these platforms to drive more awareness of some of these legacy and elite, elite artists and help them become larger overall. So can we look at two examples of big catalog acquisitions in the last 12 months, which are Springsteen and Dylan. Springsteen at the end of 2021 and Dylan in early 2022. And you can certainly see some of these trends again up on the screen. So with Springsteen, which is the yellow line, you can see here what happens to overall catalog consumption when there's a new project release, which was his album release towards the end of 2022, and that driving overall consumption, not in just the new release, but also in his catalog overall. By comparison, Dylan's also a really interesting example. What you can see there is a very predictable level of consumption with no real major events happening around him in the 2022 period. But again, for an investor looking at this space, that variation of less than 1% across a 12-month period creates a level of predictability and stability for anybody looking to acquire a catalog like this. It's not all smooth sailing ahead, though, when we look at this category. There's many additional points that have to be considered. Um, as really anything an artist owns when they complete one of these tran transactions can be considered for future development as part of the catalog acquisition. Things like name, image, likeness, an artist could find their likeness, likeness being used in ways they were not expecting as well as ways they were expecting, so caution needs to be made there. And then, of course, there's opportunity for future marketing tent poles, brand partnerships, sync opportunities, biopics, biographies, museum exhibits, the list is endless. And actually, interestingly, Primary Wave is listed as a producer on the Whitney Houston biopic that came out in December. This is an example of how Catalog Investor can be involved with additional marketing projects to drive catalog performance. We also saw how a biography can affect streaming, such as the release of Avicii's uh, biography, Tim, in, in January 2022, which drove a 270% spike in video streaming for the Wake Me Up video and 35% overall lift 
for the Wake Me Up song, Week on Week. And then lastly, of course, when we look at this space, we're looking very carefully at effective interest rates, which is a major driver in the catalog consumption or acquisition space, and more to come as things play out over the course of 2023. Moving away from music for the next few trends, our sixth trend looks at the power and impact of franchises, which have dominated so many aspects of streaming growth and consumption in the video space over the last few years. So two iconic franchises, franchise purchases we'll look at. First of all, Lucasfilm by Disney in 2012, which was about a $4 billion acquisition, or just over $5 billion in, uh, in today's money. Again, according to our research, we've seen an over $10 billion all-time box office gross from that acquisition. In addition, there's been 25, more than 25 TV series and other consumer goods and marketing for the brand um, as a, over the last uh, period of that transaction. Marvel is an even bigger story. Again, similar purchase price slightly early, about $4 billion, about uh, $5.5 billion in today's money. Generated an incredible over $32 billion all-time box office gross and 58 additional TV series and shows consumer goods and marketing for the brand. Similar to the dynamic we see in music, these franchises, these incredible franchises, iconic franchises, also create superfans. And superfans in the TV and film space are, the highest, are similar to music, and they're the highest level of fan we can find. 52% of people who watch superhero movies are the highest level of superfan in the movie space. And they typically are 24% uh, higher and more engaged compared to other moviegoers at large. So again, these investments in these iconic franchises create this flywheel of amazing superfan experience, which intensifies energy around these projects and fandom. Supermovie fans spend 67% more time watching movies, and over a quarter of the group express they'd pay more for top quality technology for their entertainment consumption, significantly higher than the US average. Last year, we talked about NFTs. In fact, South by last year was full of NFT for the whole week. Um, and we talked a little bit about the rise of NFTs in music and entertainment category, but also were very quick to point out the, uh, the obvious hype versus reality. And we certainly saw some of that proven out in 2022. So I thought it would helpful be helpful for us to take a look back at where we see the NFT space um, over the last 12 months. Aside from just overall economy impacting consumers' willingness to spend money on NFTs, other issues still remain. Approximately two-thirds of the US general population say they're aware of NFTs, which is great, but only four out of 10 people who've heard of NFTs can correctly define them. Unsurprisingly, millennials as a category are most optimistic about NFTs, and 30% more likely than average to agree they're exciting about owning an NFT in the future. And to drill down a little further, these top three NFT perceptions amongst the public are already in three categories. One is don't understand the hype with just over half in that category. Find the concept too confusing, again, around 51%. And the third category is that many folks that we've uh, done research with suggest that, uh, believe that NFT buyers are really only doing this around speculation or for money. On the more positive side, NFT types consumers are most interested in, unsurprisingly, remain digital artwork and NFTs related to music and video games. And, uh, what we see is that there's pretty consistent interest in that with about 30 to 35% of consumers still willing to engage in these categories, which are, of course, very, very entertainment driven. Overall, our research shows that consumer demand dropped 58% in the summer of 2022 as NFT value dropped. So we see continued trouble ahead in the NFT category, and it's not clear when we'll leave the crypto winter, but this will continue to change and morph and evolve, and we'll have more to talk about on the NFT space and the entertainment space in the months, months to come. Heading back to music for trend number eight. We wanted to share our latest insights on the challenges the music industry is dealing with around content creation discovery. Similar to the one trillion US streams we shared earlier on, another massive milestone was reached in 2022 where we saw an average of over around 100,000 new ISRCs delivered to DSPs or streaming platforms every day. And for anybody in the room who's not familiar with the ISRC, this is an international standard code used for uniquely identifying sound recordings and music video recordings. So it's a way to track the amount of music that's being created in the industry. 
when we looked at what's happening uh, over the course of 2022, we saw a clear break between major distribution and rest of industry. So the rest of industry was really responsible for 96% of these uploads, so 95,000 of the 100,000 ISRCs coming from the broader industry with only really 4% coming from the majors. This obviously really highlights the continued growth of musical content and points back to the challenges of discovery that in turn drive catalog music consumption from established artists. In short, when there's too much choice, we as consumers can often default to what we know. Looking at ISRC growth since 2018 is also really, really interesting. With over two times as many ISRCs created in 2022 versus 2018, just a few years ago. At Luminate, we counted 196 million total ISRCs across audio and video in our systems at the end of 2022. And while you can see a very small 0.2% pandemic-related dip in 2020, the growth of new ISRC creations continued to recover from that in 2021 and 2022. And actually, when you look at our data right now, 33% of all ISRCs in our universe are just from the years of 2021 and 2022. And if you had the 26 million created in 2020, that means that just under half of all the musical content that we're tracking within our system has been created since the beginning of 2020. Thought of another way, almost half of the music that we listen to is from the pandemic or post-pandemic era, which is just a phenomenal, phenomenal stat. With this explosion happening, what are the effects on streaming? Well, in the US, 50% of audio tracks that we see within our systems have 10 or less streams over the course of 2022. And in the US, 16% have zero on-demand audio streams, and that number increases to 24% globally. So with so much content being created, discovery is more critical than ever. There's just so much more content to choose from, and this is going to continue to be an issue that we'll be tracking and reporting on over the coming year. As we head into our final two trends for 2022, we're revisiting one from 2021, which is the continued globalization of entertainment, where we'll start with the rise of Latin and Latin music. Latin was the fastest growing genre in 2022, looking across total on-demand audio and video streaming, when compared to other genres such as R&B, hip hop, rock, pop, country, and dance electronic. In fact, nearly one in 14 Latin audio and video streams in 2022 came from Bad Bunny's album release. And that's around 7% of total 2022 Latin on-demand streams in the US, even considering that album was only released in May of 2022. We look at Latin fan stats. It's actually very interesting. 37% of Latin music listeners in the US are actually not Hispanic or from a Hispanic origin. What we also find is Latin music listeners spend 29% more time with music than the average listener, and 59% of Latin music listeners are Gen Z or millennials. We also reported that in 2022, the Latin genre overtook the country genre in weekly on-demand streaming for the first time ever in May, when Bad Money's album came out. And this was a feat that we saw repeated during the week ending, uh, uh, first week of November, and then repeated each of the final five weeks of 2022. Similar to Latin, K-pop, or music originating uh, from the broader Southeast Asian region, saw a phenomenal year in 2022 as well. Gen Z millennials make up 71% of K-pop's audience. And what we also see when we look at our data is younger K-pop listeners are 39% more likely to utilize video streaming every month for music compared to the average US listener. And that same group, that Gen Z K-pop listener, are 89% more likely to watch short music video clips compared to the US listener. And we can see this trend, or some of these trends, very clearly when we look at the K-pop artist Blackpink from 2022. Video or consumption via video actually helped pr propel Pink Venom track as just under 80% of the release week global streams came from the video category alone. And what you can see also up on screen is the incredible impact of international audiences. Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, of course, Korea and the US, were the top five streaming countries during release week. And what we continue to see is countries like Indonesia and Philippines propelling content in the region 
due to their rapid growth in streaming and affinity for foreign content and international artists. Globalization of content is creating new and expanding genres, now challenging those established for decades, and globalization of audiences is creating new consumers who are discovering and enjoying this content, propelling it to even greater impact on the global stage. Last, but certainly not least, we have the topic of diversity in entertainment, and we talked a little bit about this last year as well. It's less of a trend, but rather a subject that we're happy to see more and more people paying attention to within the industry, and something we're very actively involved in as well. As I mentioned earlier, we're seeing an increase in representation across music, film, and TV due to audience demand with genres like Latin and K-pop, seeing huge growth in music consumption, as well as interestingly Korean and Japanese video content seeing high viewership across streaming video platforms. We also started off 2023 as an incredible year for black female artists thus far, and some key achievements around artists such as Missy Elliott being the first woman in hip hop nominated to the Rock and Roll, Roll Hall of Fame, Viola Davis becoming the third black woman to win an EGOT, Rihanna and her incredible halftime show at the Super Bowl, uh, Lizzo becoming the first black woman to win record of the year at the Grammys since Whitney Houston in 1994, and SZA becoming Billboard's 2023 Woman of the Year while also crossing 10 billion global on-demand audio streams, a feat that only 75 other artists have actually accomplished ever. But what about the consumption habits of these very diverse audiences? We think there's huge power in understanding these habits in order to effectively address representation that can most effectively reflect culture. Some of the following key insights from our latest research studies show how much power there is across different groups in the US when it comes to the consumption of content. If we look at the black or African American community, they're actually 10% more likely to stream podcasts and talk shows, and you can see some of their top categories here across entertainment, comedy, health, and fitness. While the Hispanic community is 10%, typically spends 10% more money on entertainment compared to the, US average, the average US citizen, and are 22% more likely to watch movies in theaters than the average consumer. If we look at Asian and Asian American, they're 10% more likely to pay for top quality entertainment technology, such as smartwatches, specialized headphones, smart displays, speakers. And if we look at the Native American community, they're actually 35% more likely to prioritize spending money on entertainment experiences than buying material products. And then lastly, if we look at the LGBTQ plus audiences, 25% more likely to use turntables, record, and vinyl players. They actually do have record players and 26% more likely to be considered a trendsetter by their friends. And on the subject of gender, we'd like to end today with just a few key stats from our latest uh, study we uh, released, Be the Change, Gender Equality, which came out earlier this month in celebration of International Women's Day in, in partnership with some of our partners at TuneCore and Believe, where we saw more than 1,500 respondents across the music industry, from artists to producers to executives representing over 100 countries. Key findings from this study, which has been repeated for a few years, now identify progress, but still with so much work to be done in areas such as gender bias and leadership, where 66% of participants want to see more women and gender expansive individuals in positions of power. And it also covered really important topics for the industry, such as pay equity, harassment, the impact of social media and discrimination on minority artists, and the significant regional international variation we see on all of these topics. Looking forward and very positively, participants were keen to support actions that can help address gender equality in areas such as compensation, networking community, mentorship, creating inclusive workplaces, providing resources for individuals impacted by gender discrimination, and commitment to pay transparency for job vacancies. And we're incredibly proud, proud to be part of a study that highlights the need for more representation behind the scenes as well. So with that, that's all we have for this year. Thank you for joining us. Uh, a lot to unpack, a lot of data, a lot of detail. Um, we hope we'll be back next year to talk about 2023, which is already showing some very interesting trends and insights for the music, TV, film, and entertainment industry. And thank you again for coming out on a Friday morning. So I think we've got a few questions that have come in that we're trying to, uh, we're gonna try and cover for a few minutes. 
So the first question that's come up is, uh, great success for artists who have industry power and established brand fandom. Is their success making it even harder for small acts to succeed? And that came in as a, an online question. So um, I would say our data says that yes, and really the challenge comes down to what we showed in some of the slides, which is just the, the massive creation of content. Um, it's harder than ever to uh, establish a presence when there are 100,000 new tracks being uploaded every single day um, and the complexity around discovery. Um, so we would say from our perspective, it's becoming harder for any artist to break through right now um, and something we'll continue to look at. Just trying to get through some of these questions. Um, any thoughts on release trends? For music, surprise drop versus traditional marketing rollout. For TV, drop the entire season at once versus weekly. So I think for music, it's easier for us to comment. Um, you know, we look very, very closely at the impact of events on music overall. And if you remember some of the slides showing streaming consumption and the impact of events, um, these are really uh, interesting things for us to see. So whether it's an album release, a live event, a live stream event, um, these all have very significant impacts on, on overall consumption for a particular artist. Um, and what we typically see is, certainly for established elite level artists, an event can cause what we refer to as a streaming floor reset. Streaming levels increase and then, uh, and then settle to a slightly higher level than they were before. Um, and elements of surprise or non-traditional marketing effects uh, definitely very positive, positive there as well. It's a question about TikTok in the future, which I think I'll avoid. <laughs> um, and I think just looking at the questions, there's other questions here which have come through, probably things that we are not going to be able to cover today. So I think we'll wrap it up. Unless there's any other questions, people can come find me after the event. Thank you again for coming out.